Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today we begin this Kerbal video with the culmination of a mission which started during Kerbal's stardate point twenty three point five. Jebediah Kerman was sent out into the unknown by the R and D team with an order to bring an asteroid back for study. He, however, took things a little more literally than they would expect, not only delivering it into orbit, but well onto R&D's doorstep. If only he hadn't taken so long, things might have been okay. But with the new Kerbal Space Program version 0.25, building destruction is becoming a thing. This was the secret project that Harvester alluded to, saying that many players may get by without ever encountering it. I of course took this as something of a challenge. But enough of that right now, we're going to take a look at some of the other new features which have been added to the game. And to do this, we're going to start a new game, let's call it 25, why not? Now, uh, we have of course Sandbox Science and Career, I'm going to start looking at the changes to Career Mode. First of all, down here, we have difficulty options. Now, some of these were previously available through the Alt F12 cheat menu, but now you have uh, an easy set of options on the start menu here. You can pick easy, normal, moderate, and hard. Notice how you have these options here that get removed. So if you try it on hard mode, you can't revert, you can't quick load, the crew is dead, it does not respawn, you have to manually hire people, uh, you, know, you have to also purchase new items and research uh, when you research them. It uh, cuts down the amount of cash. So. Uh, yeah, hard mode also lets you adjust the amount of uh, reputation, science rewards and everything, so you can do super easy, super hard. Hard mode, mode gives you 60%, which may not seem it is quite as hard as it could otherwise be, but I will say that what tends to happen is that if you have it too low, it just turns into an endless grind fest in my uh, mind, but uh, that's no bad thing, perhaps that's what you want. And so here we have the new center, the new flight center, the new space center, yes. And we have this new building here. This is the administration building, which features Mortimer Kerman, Linus Kerman, Walt Kerman, and Gus Kerman. You nicely, they're all little animated with their portraits here. Uh, these guys let you adjust your strategies. And really what the strategies do is they let you um, convert one currency into another. For example, if you don't know what reputation does, you might be inclined to convert some of it into money. So, for example, um, an appreciation campaign, you know, spearheaded by Walt Kerman, of all people, he uh, will take 5% of the fund income, but uh, get you more reputation for your funds. The reverse is true for the open source tech program. In this case, you get science, but you gain more reputation. Okay, so where do I go to convert money? Oh look, here's another one. Recovery transporter, recovering parts will give you more funds in launch costs and more to vessel recovery factor, which is interesting. Uh, you can also aggressive negotiation. It says, we can get better deals with our suppliers by taking up a more assertive stance with our, in our negotiations with them. They probably won't see this as a friendly move, but we can definitely have it our way if we press them. It's not as if we care what others think, do we? And what it says is you spend some reputation and uh, you get, you save funds on launch costs and R&D purchases. But yeah, you lose a uh, reputation. So this is a way to burn your reputation in exchange for other things. And of course, you can also adjust how committed you are to the program. If you want to be really aggressive, you can save a lot of money. And this is, of course, it just it adds a little more uh, complexity to figuring out how you're going to be running your program. Okay, so more science for reputation. No, more science. Fundraising campaign, that's probably what we want. It'll cost us reputation to start this, but it will give us, it'll convert reputation to money. I'm not gonna do this right now because it will cost us reputation, but we should probably get started with our missions, right? And we all know how this goes. Launch a vessel. 
Set altitude record, I can do that. Escape the atmosphere. And so to make Mortimer happy, I have a cheap but effective rocket which will take me to space and maybe even a little bit further. Three solid rocket boosters stacked on top of each other using sequential ignition and destruction to achieve velocities that will take us beyond the Kerbal's atmosphere and perhaps into, uh, well, into high above the atmosphere even so we can collect all the science, bring it back of course. And uh, as we're falling down, we're about to see one other thing that was added to this release. Indeed, the new explosion effects. I'm sure people will be seeing a lot of those. But after that quick excursion into space, you see I have about 51 science. Now normally I would have near 90 science, but because I'm playing this on hard difficulty, I've uh, lost about 40% of the science I would normally have. But, you know, we know that there's more than enough science out there, and will be even more once we add uh, biomes to the game. And using my new, improved reputation, I can approach Mortimer Kerman and ask him to begin a fundraising campaign, which will convert reputation into cash. Of course, he's got this already planned out. He is, of course, an expert in unforeseen consequences. And uh, yeah, we will use this. We can adjust our commitment to uh, whatever we want. Obviously, we're only going to do what we can afford right now. We can't go negative. I mean, you can go into negative reputation by killing Kerbals and things like that. But you can't uh, go into debt in your reputation in terms of when you're uh, picking your strategies. Now over in the R&D building you'll see why I thought the money was important because of course I can research this but now to actually get access to the parts, see how each of the parts now has a price attached to them, you have to pay for each part in hard mode. You can disable this feature in what, uh, if you like but uh, it can actually make tech progression very costly and of course I'm very good at getting a lot of science in a short amount of time and that's what I found to be my bottleneck a lot was I was getting science faster than I was getting the cash to unlock the parts. And speaking of parts, let's take a look at the new parts, or rather the old parts. They have integrated Space Plane Plus. The parts are actually attributed to uh, C7 Aerospace. It's mostly Mark II fuselage parts, so we have uh, these fuel tanks, we have uh, bicouplers, tail sections. Everything is a lot nicer, and uh, now the connection between parts is a lot nicer. You can actually join them parallel like that instead of by the top node, which uh, was a problem for a long time. Now, uh, if I take a look over uh, into the utilities section, we have cargo bays. This is the first official cargo bay which exists in the game. And of course, you can use this in your space planes to carry satellites into orbit. Now, a good way to do that is to have like a docking port inside there. Now, one of the problems you'll see previously is that actually getting it to sit straight, but if you hold the Alt key now, then it will disable surface attach mode and you will only have node attach mode. So you can actually put things on those nodes which are inside cargo bays. This is a huge advantage. Hold Alt when you're attaching things and you will be guaranteed to only connect via the green nodes. This really will save me a lot of time. So yeah, I can build out a satellite, uh, build out something into the cargo bay. And indeed, it's a cargo bay, but they've made a point, uh, hold on, to make these things symmetrical around their horizontal axis. So they can also be bomb bays. Yes, Kerbal Space Program now has support for bomb bays. Which means, by extension, it supports the development of bombers. Now, I've never really been a builder of militaristic aircraft, but you know what? It can be a lot of fun. This is a this is a plane built mostly with the new space plane plus parts. We're gonna try and do a bombing. Oh, wait, if I can just avoid this. Yes. I was gonna pretend there that I was gonna deliberately show off the new explosion physics, wasn't I? No, uh, yeah, we've got a bomb bay here. You can see I've got it opened with action groups. And there's a couple of bombs in there with little tail planes on them. Those tails are designed to pitch the rear up and pitch the nose down. Otherwise, what you'll find is the bombs will tend to just smash into the back of the bomb bay and not escape, which can be very much of a problem. I, I was testing this and I kept getting bombs literally stuck in my bay that I couldn't drop. It was pretty hilarious. 
Okay, so let's actually see whether we can do some serious damage to this uh, space center over here. Just lined it up. That dome-like thing looks like a relatively obvious target. Now, of course, when we drop these things, we have to drop them early so that they actually fly and... That looked pretty nice, but it did not destroy the dome. But the great thing about failing in Kerbal Space Program is it's just an excuse to try again. Bombs away! And, oh, those explosions do look very, very nice, I have to say, even if they didn't do any damage. Okay, how about we try a bigger bomb? This is a 1.25 meter fuselage section and nothing. Okay, so maybe I just need more munitions. Here's an example that has four underwing weapon mounts. And we've moved away from the body, but we can, yeah, we can just drop these on the runway to demonstrate. We could do like a very short version of Operation Black Buck. Get, oh, you really appreciate those explosions. They're really looking pretty spectacular. Okay, let's try and hit a target with this though. Okay, R&D department, you are gonna be hit. Oh, okay, sorry, astronaut building as well. I have to say, this is rather more fun than computing transfer orbits. So. Okay, same design, but with six devices on board. Let's try a bit of dive bombing here. Okay, which is kind of hard, because I need to coordinate everything at once. Okay, I have the R&D center in my sights. Drop, 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 and pull out of the dive. Look at this. Oh, brilliant, and absolutely no damage at all. I think I'm going to have to uh, give up on the whole bombing things to death and try some other techniques. Obvious target is the vehicle assembly building. Solid rocket booster does nothing. In the name of science, we upgraded it to one of these uh, liquid rocket boosters. Not quite so fast, but... Well, it's definitely persistent in its attempt to destroy the vehicle assembly building. Either that or it's kind of lodged itself in the side of it or something. Maybe if you look through on the other side, there's like a nose cone of a rocket sticking through. Kind of like, you know, uh, a moose with its antlers sitting over a fireplace, but like a rocket. Maybe that's what they do in Kerbal, you know, gentlemen's clubs. They have the, the moose or the, the rocket, you know, with its nose cone and satellites and things mounted above the fireplace. Fireplace probably burns rocket fuel as well, doesn't it? Yeah, I wonder when this is going to finish up. Seems to be pretty persistent, doesn't it? Oh, there we go. And it exploded. I would not have predicted that. Well, how about those SLS parts? Okay. Oh, no, no, no. Pull up, pull up. That's good. Good flying there. Uh, unfortunately ineffectual in the quest to destroy the vehicle assembly building. Nope, it's totally intact. Well, I put my best engineers to work on this and uh, then told them to get out of the vehicle assembly building because that would be really stupid. Here we go! And... Yes! We have succeeded! We have succeeded where others have failed. The vehicle assembly building is no more. It is now a burning mess of twisted steel, broken rubble, and other stuff which the Kerbals have not figured out how to make fly. I have to say that is quite a nice model in the end. Okay, moving on. Further experimentation shows that not every building is constructed equal. In fact, uh, just picking the well, picking this giant dome again. It seems that a 2.5 meter booster is quite capable of destroying it. Uh, in fact, the booster is quite capable of destroying it, but then it feels guilty about what it's done and starts running away before anybody notices. Oops, I broke it. Oh, better get out of here before anybody notices. Yeah, yeah, great thing. Just kind of disappears off out to sea so that uh, yeah, it can't be held accountable. Maybe it's just going out there thinking it's going to commit suicide or something. I, I don't know. So yeah, I have been having just a lot of fun building cool aircraft with the new parts. And truthfully, I've had to rebuild all my old aircraft because parts have changed. This is, well, this is a combination VTOL that I built. It was relatively simple with all the bits and pieces. There's one big fuel tank in the middle so the center of mass doesn't move. Kind of looks a bit ugly. That's largely because I built it around that center of mass to make sure it hangs correctly. 
it, it will fly like a regular plane, as you saw, I did a, a takeoff from the roof of the vehicle assembly building, obviously after previously landing there in VTOL mode, but I can bring this around, and there's the, the monolith down there, but we can bring it around and actually commit to a correct uh, runway style landing in this thing. Just uh, obviously doing this a little more aggressively so you can get to see the whole thing happening in real time and fit it into a video which doesn't last for hours. Yeah, touch down at a couple of hundred, well about a hundred meters per second. Uh, hold the B button to bring the brakes down, bring their velocity down via the brakes. And uh, once we slow down we can switch over our engines to the vertical engines, bring those up to about one third power. And uh, they take a while because they of course have to spool up, which is one of the big disadvantages of uh, VTOLs that are using jets. But the fact that they're so darn efficient more than makes up for it. There we go, look, just over one third power and this thing will hover beautifully. Uh, the centre of mass and the centre of lift are very well balanced so that it can actually fly in reverse relatively safely. Um, some of the aircraft I've built that are VTOLs, they have a tendency to flip out of control if you go in reverse because the centre of lift is too far displaced from the centre of mass, but this one works pretty well. Although not all my landings are nearly as smooth as I or the pilots would uh, really like. Also you can take advantage of the fact that all the Mark II fuselage sections now actually have some inherent lift. So you can actually build something that uh, gets a little bit of lift just from the body and uh, using little wings you can perhaps, you know, you can make something like, uh, well this is my version of the Dream Chaser, although I'm just taking it up on a test flight. I did fly this into orbit and successfully land it dead stick on the runway. Actually, on that part I lie, I overshot the runway and landed at the run uh, the island instead, but it works pretty well most of the time. Sometimes uh, on braking it does spin out of control and die, but you know this is all part of the development process, isn't it? And since I mention it, development of the game seems to be, uh, must be almost ready if you're seeing this, because generally when these things are shown off they're very very close to release. Just like I have released a bunch of independent warheads in my quest to destroy the vehicle assembly building and the space plane hangar at the same time. So of course this will lead to a whole bunch of new challenges for the minimum sized rocket capable of destroying the vehicle assembly building. But uh, that will happen when .25 is released which is presumably soon. Until then I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.